On the wake of this crisis and pressure from European officials, several tech giants are cracking down on Russian state media. Facebook's parent company, Meta, is blocking access to Russian news platforms, RT and Sputnik, across the European Union. Google has booted Russian state media from its Google News service. Twitter is reducing the visibility and labeling tweets that link to Russian state media organizations. Meanwhile, over the weekend, YouTube announced it is blocking Russian state media within Ukraine. It's it's also tweaking its algorithm to limit recommendations to those channels. Joining Morning Rush for analysis on these developments is Seth Shackner, Managing Director at the digital consulting firm Strat Americas. Seth, thank you for coming on Morning Rush. There are concerns that by agreeing to the new Russian landing law uh, that social media companies may be giving in to censorship. Can you explain to our viewers in just plain English what this landing law is? Sure. This landing law, good, good to be here, and thank you for having me. This, this landing law is actually something that's not, you know, exactly brand new. It's, it's been around for some time prior to the Ukraine conflict. And what, what it essentially does is if you're a foreign broadcaster or digital streaming service, it's requiring you to set up a local legal entity in Russia, actually, in the Russian Federation. And, you know, on the one hand, that may seem kind of a normal thing to have an office or a person or at least a legal presence in, you know, the territory where you're operating. But um, the law itself has been <clears throat> read, I think, to be basically to make those who sign on to it and create these legal entities, you know, more vulnerable to censorship and to pressure, basically, and to propaganda. And I think that's that's the kind of the gist of what you're seeing. And, you know, and pretty surprising because a lot of the, the big tech titans who, you know, have been all about free speech and I think still speak to that have been signing on to it. A Apple has acquiesced to it. I believe TikTok and Spotify have and uh, even Meta and Twitter are looking at complying at parts of the law, actually. Um, prior to what happened over the last week and a half with the invasion, um, one could look at the law and say, you know, hey, this is going to set up the grounds now for for social networks to, to be censored and to have to squelch content that the government doesn't, doesn't want to have promoted. But I think, um, I think right now, and you're seeing some moves with Netflix, I think all cards, all bets are sort of off the table. So I think it could wind up having maybe even the inverse effect of what was intended. Yeah, it's interesting uh, developments for sure. Google uh, announced it had demonetized RT and other Russian-backed channels, meaning they can no longer receive ad revenue uh, through its platforms or ad networks. How significant is this revenue loss for those Russian outlets? Well, I think it's more about the, the, what's actually happening here. It's I don't think it's so much about the revenue loss on, on either side. You know, Russia is an important country. It's 10th or 11th in terms of its market size. So it's, it's not something that I think any entity wants to ignore or, or lead. But I think what you're seeing is is blocking of Russian state media. And, you know, the, the most interesting case is, is actually Netflix, who uh, I think agreed to carry around 20 different uh, official Russian channels, RT, Russia Today being probably the biggest of them. And they just, you know, announced Monday that they're, they're going to ignore that and, and, and basically not carry those channels, basically. So I think that what YouTube's doing, uh, certainly the European Union is doing this as well is, is pretty, is pretty significant stuff. I think, I think over time, what is going to be more significant just to watch all these entities and see how they step up and moderate their own content. And that might mean squelching, not just blocking, but squelching user generated content that, you know, is either fake or, or propagandistic, basically. And that'll be a real, uh, a really substantive move. If we start to see that. Can, can Sputnik and RT, these Russian uh, outlets, can they survive these type of hits? Um, yeah, I think, I think those probably can, because I think those are sort of like the, 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 foreign distribution outlets for, for Russian content, actually. I think they're, they're really different than, say, an NBC or, or some of the traditional multimedia conglomerates. Um, but I think the real thing is, is over time, you know, the, for our social networks who are kind of being, whether they're signing on to this agreement or abiding by it that the Russian Federation is asking for, do they want to stay in the territory, essentially, under these conditions and have to have legal protracted sort of legal fights with the Russian government will probably be the bigger issue for, for our companies, actually. I think for RT and Sputnik, um, uh, it certainly will hurt them. But I think they're part of the kind of the Russian state sort of supported media apparatus. So I think they're, they'll probably figure out a way to survive.
Let's focus uh, specifically here, uh, lastly, on social media's response. Twitter and Facebook said they would start labeling posts with links to Russian state media stories, warning people about the source of information before letting them share or click. This is not removing the post, though. So how effective will this be? Look, I hope all of these things are helpful steps in the right direction of free speech. So, of course, they're probably not going to be able to filter or moderate everything. But I think if you if you start to see that, and there has been pushback already from the Russian government. There have been fines and and uh, penalties with, with squelching data flows. And, and, and But um, I think that could be a very effective measure over time. And, and it's a very realistic sort of middle ground for them to take, um, you know, rather than just, say, pulling out and walking out, which, which I don't necessarily think is the most effective way to do it either. Seth Shackner, Digital Business Executive and Managing Director at Strat Americas. We appreciate your time, sir.